power of God that hearts can be pricked, that hearts can come to the Lord. And so therefore, we want to talk about the mechanism, the means by which people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as best as we can play our role, and that is through prayers. You know, we live in perilous times. I was reading about the diseases. I'm talking about physical maladies now. Diseases are on the rise. Uh, there's something called this drug-resistant fungus, and it's spreading all around the world. It's manifested itself in 30 countries so far, and the scientists are saying there's a, a warning of this so-called superbug. The CDC, uh, they don't know what it is. They don't know why it's coming. You may have heard of all of the, uh, the new outbreaks of measles that are happening nationwide. Not only that, morality is constantly on the decline. 70%, um, according to Barna's research, of all people believe for the most part, that same-sex relationships are moral. Did you hear what I just said? Society now has looked upon the same-sex relationship as normal, 70%. In addition to that, the culture is rapidly becoming less and less Christian. This country was founded with the thought and the ideology of the Judeo-Christian standard that has rapidly moved away from the center of religious thought in the United States of America. Secular humanism has become more and more pervasive. What is that? It's that humanity is capable of self-fulfillment and morality without God without the belief in God. As I told some of our ministers, uh, and you might want to read the book, and uh, if you can't get the book, there's uh, uh, research on the web on this subject of the unchurched. The unchurched is becoming a larger and larger percentage of the people in our world. They don't subscribe to any particular religion. It's their ideology, it's their religion, whatever that may be. Finally, I believe our young people, I'm talking about the need for prayer and why prayer is absolutely critical in the day in which we live. Our young people are a target of the adversary. I've never known, at least in my lifetime, so much discussion around depression. Obviously, depression is pervasive across all people, but I've never heard so many young people being depressed. And this depression obviously then ultimately moves to the ultimate conclusion that the devil wants, and that's suicide. That's on the incline. So much so that uh, the interest from our own young people has caused the teachers of our Real Talk program to talk on that subject for at least three weeks. I'm talking about the need for prayer, saints of God. Our young people are now coming up in an unchurched family. What do you mean? There was a time when people believed, parents believed, grandparents believed in God. And they did not allow their children just to do whatever the children wanted to do. They took them to church or at least sent them. Now, people are growing up in an environment where Sunday is just another day. Somebody say amen. It's just another day on the calendar. And obviously the world system, especially the school systems, programmatically are doing things on that day to make things worse. Track meets, baseball games, sports activities, other things that at one time at least gave deference and respect to the day, no longer. I remember when barbershops and Grocery stores were closed on Sunday. Look around you. As I was talking to, to my barber, and again, 
For those of you wondering why I have a barber, I have a beard that I get trimmed. But uh, my understanding is that that's just a regular day now. Many customers love to go to the barber and the beautician on Sunday. I'm talking about why prayer is necessary. Say amen. And so that's why all of that that I just told you is one of the reasons why that slide you're looking at says this means war. Some people say prayers, I'm talking about now the importance of the need for God's power. And when you talk about prayer, it speaks to the need for the power of God. Some people talk about or say prayers. Then some people pray, but then some people's lives become prayers. And obviously what we're hoping is that that would be you, that you would live a life of prayer, that you will be a person that prays and not just say prayers. And so that speaks to attitude. What is your attitude? What is your perspective when it comes to prayer? What, what's your expectation? Do you expect God to bless? Are, are you fearful? When I, when I talked about uh, the rapidly growing diseases in our country and indeed in the world, that's not anything for you to fear. That was really just to give you some perspective of what's going on. Why? Because your word says he shall give you angels that will give charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. The angels shall bear you up with their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. Say amen. You have the provision, provision rather, of the precious Holy Spirit that engulfs you, that surrounds you. You have angelic hosts that go before you. That's one of the reasons why you need to pray. 